talking about successful anime influenced shows, it's highly likely that Ruby will be mentioned. Currently Ruby is a massive success all over the world with 5 seasons currently aired, and all sorts of merchandising including its own manga series and even a spin-off series. With Ruby's success, there was hope for many small indie animation studios to reach the top and become successful with their own anime influence product. Misty Konexia, a popular YouTuber mainly known for his top 10 list, had dreamed of his novel, Konexia and the Eight Seals, becoming an animated series. So when he was contacted by an animation studio known as Studio Aizune, who said they would create the anime for him, he agreed and the Konexia and the Eight Seals anime was to be made. But as we know now, Konexia and the Eight Seals has been cancelled after 22 months of production. So how did one show end up being one of the current top animated shows on YouTube, while the other is left to be forgotten by its own creator? In this video I'll be looking into the differences between the creation of Ruby by Rooster Teeth and Konexia and the Eight Seals by Misty Konexia. I first want to start this off with saying that I know a hot topic of discussion will likely be around the budget for each show, and so I want to get this out of the way first. I estimated Konexi and the 8 Seals budget to be around $77,000 based on the average earnings of Misty's Patreon page for the show, but it was probably closer to $100,000. Ruby's production cost is unknown as of right now, so it's hard to debate this topic without anything other than speculation based on how much money Rooster Teeth was making at the time. Rooster Teeth is a huge YouTube channel now, but back in late 2012 when they originally announced Ruby, they had around 2.2 million subscribers. But even with their higher view counts and subs, they also had a bigger team of people in house who needed to be paid, while also paying for an office space. Misty on the other hand is a one man band who hired a third party company to make his anime. With that being said, I do not believe Ruby's budget was anywhere near $100,000. The animation software poser that they use for the series is pretty cheap, and animating in 3D is normally cheaper and quicker than 2D animations. I'd like to note that the only reason Connecting the 8 Seals has a 100k budget is due to how Patreon takes monthly donations from backers, and the production of Connecting the 8 Seals was dragged out so long that the Patreon just kept taking people's money despite no real progress in the production of the anime being made. Over the 22 months, the studio behind Connecting the 8 Seals was only able to pump out one and a half episodes. If they honestly spent that much to produce this anime, then that would mean that the first episode of Connecting the 8 Seals cost 66k to make. Considering episode 1 only got half a million views on the video, it definitely didn't make its money back to even close to breaking even. Connecting the 8 Seals had the budget it needed to be great, but the money was clearly mishandled, with animators claiming they were paid below minimum wage income while working on the show. Misty's channel has been dropping in monthly views for a while, which weirdly seems to start shortly after he announces Connecting in the 8 Seals. It's more than likely that some of the money from the Patreon probably went into helping keeping Misty himself afloat, with the Patreon now fully converted into a Patreon for his channel. At least he's being a bit more honest about where the money's actually going though. With Ruby being in in-house production and only hiring a third party for the music, I think it's safe to assume that more money doesn't equal a better quality end product. I want to move on to the history of each creator and how they developed their series. Ruby was created by Monty Oom, who was working for Rooster Teeth at the time as an anime on Red vs Blue Season 10. Monty had pitched his idea of Ruby and told that if he was to complete his work on Red vs Blue, he would be given the chance to produce his series. After finishing his work on Season 10, he spent two weeks creating the first trailer for Ruby. The trailer became incredibly popular not just for the Rooster Teeth fans, but for anime fans too. Currently, the trailer actually has received more views than the episode 1 of the first season. Prior to Rooster Teeth, he had been known for his fighting animations such as Dead Fantasy. He held many roles on the team including writer, director and lead animator. Misty Konexio is a YouTuber with a pretty big following of his own. During his teenage years, he wrote a novel called Konexi and the Eight Seals. After becoming quite popular on YouTube in the anime community, he decided to release his book for people to buy and read. The book has received moderate acclaim from fans of Misty and some highly negative reviews from people outside his fandom. Although we don't know the details for sure, an animation studio called Aizune Studio contacted Misty in early 2016 with an idea to bring his book to animation. Aizune Studio, whose history extends only as far back as to one other project named A Tree of Life, which was just a failed Kickstarter project, Aizune can barely be called an animation company. Most of the employees live in completely different countries from each other, and I'd be surprised if the company is registered officially in any way. Why Misty chose to hire this studio to make his anime is really unknown, but going from his video where he announces Connecting 8 Seals hiatus, he admits that he was inexperienced with managing something of this scale. 
To me, this seems to imply that he would simply have said yes to anyone asking for a chance to animate his book. Izuno Studio just got there first. I think it's easy to say that both creators do share a passion for their creations. Monty Um took great care in designing Ruby, fleshing out the world and characters in interesting ways. And despite his tragic death in 2015, Rooster Teeth informed the Ruby fans that Monty had discussed his plans for the future of Ruby with his co-workers, which meant they were able to continue with future seasons of Ruby in keeping with Monty's vision. Misty obviously had a lot of passion for his novel he wrote in his teenage years, enough so to even name his daughter after the main character, so it's no doubt he had good intentions going into this project. His book has always been the main focus when it comes to Chronexian EA Seals. The anime has always intended to be a way to sell more copies of the book. He spent a lot of time and effort writing the book, but just wasn't as enthusiastic when it came to creating the anime. The production of each show is one of the deciding factors on whether the show will be successful or not. If you can't keep a consistent schedule and manage your employees poorly, then you're bound to fail. Ruby has suffered very little production issues. Ruby has been able to consistently release a season each year since the first season in 2013. Episode lengths have increased and its style evolving as each season goes along. One example being removing the black outline background characters in favour of a more appealing generic 3D models instead. Rooster Teeth even released a four part production diary for Ruby Season 2. Connecty and the Eight Seals seemingly had a smooth start with the production with regular updates for Patreon supporters, but Missy had set an August release date for Episode 1 while only starting production in March. It was a time frame the first time an animation studio was unlikely to even be able to keep, and Chronexi and the Eight Seals were delayed for another three months before finally being released on November 8, 2016. Episode 2 didn't fare too much better either, with eight months passing from the release of Episode 1 for Episode 2 to come out. Adding to that is the fact that it's not even a full episode, it's a teaser slash part 1 of episode 2. And that was it. After 8 months of silence on both Misty's YouTube channel and Patreon, he announced the indefinite hiatus of Connecty and the Eight Seals. My observation is that the huge influx of money for such a small startup such as Izune Studio, and along with their team being spread out across multiple countries just overwhelmed them. You're looking at early 20s who are suddenly handed thousands of dollars with very little direction in how to spend it wisely. Their failed Kickstarter project was only asking for 15 grand for a 25 minute OVA, but during production of Connecting in the 8 Seals they were bringing in over half that amount every month through the Patreon. They just weren't prepared for something this big. Connects in the 8 Seals was intended to be a full season with at least 12 episodes and Izune Studios only previous animation work was a Kickstarter pitch video, while Rooster Teeth had experience from 10 seasons of work on Red vs Blue, which used the Halo games as its world in which the story would take place. That let Rooster Teeth focus on creating a fun enjoyable story while the game provides the set pieces for which the story to take place in. They had even been experimenting with adding their own custom animation sequences in seasons of Red vs Blue prior to Ruby's release. So what's the takeaway from all this? Connecting the 8 Seals had both money and time which were both given to the show by Misty's fans. They were willing to wait years for the release of this show and were willing to fund it with their money all the way to the end. But the lack of an experienced project manager for the show likely caused a lot of time and money to be wasted for no good reason. But also, I feel Misty may have had a lot of passion for the show, but the studio making it may not have. After all, they're just getting paid to make a show. It's not their story or characters. They tried to make their own story and failed so they made Connecting the Eight Seals as a consolation prize. Ruby has a creator who's passionate about his story and a team of friends who wanted to help bring his vision to life. They knew not to overcomplicate things the first time round and to just get the foundations down instead. They worked as any other animation studio would, with deadlines and release schedules to adhere to. And although the first season can be a bit wonky at times, it was still able to spawn a massive community that shared the same love for the show as the people creating it, because of the hard work that everyone at Rooster Teeth had put into it. That's how you make a successful anime influence show. Thanks for watching, leave a like if you liked it and subscribe for future content like this one.